Best will always be a matter of personal preference. And while I cannot tell you which printer is the best one for you, I can share what I know about the printers that I have and hopefully help you get started with your crafting journey. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delonda. It's me again, Delonda. And thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, we are going to be talking about something that is very popular with new Cricut crafters. We are going to be talking about printers. And while I cannot tell you which one is the best, because I am always going to feel that best is a matter of personal preference, we are going to talk about four different things things to take into consideration when you're in the market for a printer. We're going to look at the price. We're going to look at the purpose. We're going to look at the ink requirements, and we're going to look at a few project examples of three different types of printers. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about the Canon MX472 printer first. Now, this is the oldest printer in this house, and I'm probably not going to get rid of it before it just literally has to say to me, I'm done, Delonda, okay? Because I love it, and it just, it works perfectly fine. So this is an example of an inkjet or what you might consider as a desk jet printer. They don't make this model anymore, but they do still make Canon MX400 series printers. You can just go online and look. I know they have some uh, available on Amazon. Let's talk about the price range. So the price range for a printer like this would be right at, mm, $50 to $125. Let's just put this right here for right now. All right. The purpose of this printer would be for daily use. Um, so like if I was going to print out maybe a grocery list, I would use this printer. Or when my kids were living at home, they would print their, you know, their homework from here. If I needed to just print a quick photo, I could print it from here. And if I wanted to do print then cut projects from my Cricut, I would use this printer to do my printing. The ink requirements, it uses the ink that's indicated on the box that um, the printer comes in. This is an example of the ink that this printer uses. So it has two cartridges. There's one color cartridge and one black cartridge. Normally it comes with the printer, sometimes it doesn't. What you'll know about inkjet printers, and this is just my opinion, most of the time the ink costs more than the printer because a box of this ink runs at about $30. And so if I need a box of color ink and a box of black ink, that's $60. And this printer probably costs me about $50, okay? But the ink does not run out fast. I will say the ink lasts for a pretty long time. So that's just one thing to note. All right, let's look at some project ideas and examples because I have used this printer. This is the printer that I started with when I first got started on my crafting journey. So if you are just getting started on your crafting journey, you don't need to have an expensive printer if you are just interested in doing basic print then cut projects. Let me show you some examples. Now, as a new Cricut owner or a new crafter, I highly suggest that you don't spend a lot of money on a printer. Like I said, my printer costs right at about $50. And when it goes out, I'm not going to pay a lot of money for another inkjet printer. You really should not have to pay a lot of money for a printer. Let's look at some examples of projects that I've done using my regular 
inkjet printer that I just showed you. Now, this is just a few of the examples. Please know I have done tons and tons, literally, of projects using my standard inkjet printer. If you look right there behind me, the heat press stand, you see my Cricut Cuties. I printed those with my regular standard inkjet printer. If you're curious about how I did that, I will leave a link to the tutorial below this video. This is another project that I've done using my regular standard inkjet printer. This is just the bag that my Cricut 9x9 Easy Press came in. And all I did was print the photo from Microsoft Word and I pressed it on this bag. Okay. I used some of that dark photo transfer paper to do that. When I got when I first got started with crafting and I was getting into using images, when I was moving beyond using vinyl and I started printing images and I was working on photo keychains, like this is one of the keychains that I made. So it's a picture of my daughters and I have the same picture on the front and back. And I used printable vinyl from my regular standard inkjet printer. This is another example of a photo keychain that I made. This was on Mother's Day, I think two years ago. Okay, it's just my kids and I. Um, this is one of those Spotify keychains. And, you know, if you're able to scan this, you'll see that the, the song actually does play. Um, and this is another example of a photo keychain. So this is just the New Orleans Saints. I, no comment. Okay. And now this is an example of a t-shirt. I've never worn this t-shirt, but this is an example of using dark photo or dark fabric transfer paper on, you know, on a t-shirt. So, and it's just a picture of Peter and I for my wedding day. And it just says, I love going on this journey with him. Um, and I, I just did this one as an example. I haven't ever worn this one. All right. I have made other stickers. So here's some stickers that I made before. So with the regular standard ink, jet printer when you're just getting started you don't have to spend a lot of money on a printer and you will be able to do many many crafts that you see a lot of people doing you can make puzzles you can make stickers you can do photo magnets you can do t-shirts you can do so you just have an unlimited amount of amount of possibilities let's look at some of the materials that you will need in order to get started with that now, these are just some examples. This is not everything. This is not comprehensive of everything you could use because this video would just be way too long if I were to talk about everything. When I first got started and I was making photo keychains, I used to always use this paper right here. This is the Paper Studio brand. And from what I know, you can only purchase this from Hobby Lobby. Now, I used to love this paper. I still love it. Um, the only problem I ever had with this paper is that sometimes it would be too thick to go through my print printer and so I would kind of have to hold it and guide it through my printer and I made a lot of keychains you know using that that photo sticker paper and then I found out about this kind and I just fell in love with it and I haven't really changed it so this one is the Ava uh, vinyl sticker paper and this one is for inkjet printers they make them for a variety of printers so depending on your regular standard inkjet printer you know, you might get this kind or you might get the one that's for desk jet printers, but you would get the one that matches the printer that you have. So pay attention to that. Also, if you're not going to be using the links that I have below the video and you just want to go on Amazon and get this brand, make sure yours says the AIVA because there's another one that looks like this. That's not this. Okay, so pay attention to that. This is the one that's glossy. They also have one that is matte. Both of them work beautifully. This is an example of the matte version, okay? So I don't know if you can see that, but it's not shiny at all, all right? These are some stickers that I printed out using the StarCraft brand. StarCraft makes a brand of paper. There are a lot of companies that make vinyl sticker paper or printable vinyl. Same thing for the most part. All right, when I'm ready to do uh, fabric transfers, like the transfer that's on this bag, I always, no matter if I'm using a white shirt, pink shirt, blue shirt, black shirt, I'm always, always going to use dark fabric transfers because in my opinion, those just work better. You're gonna get a better, higher quality image because you know it's trying to pull the ink and make sure your, your image is vibrant that's just my opinion um so i always get the dark no matter what brand now this is just one brand this one came from walmart pen and gear or i think it's called pen 
pin gear, pinning gear. Um, this is the dark fabric transfers, but there are a lot of companies that make dark fabric transfers. If you are interested, you could also get like Caesar Easy Color DTV. That is to be used with your regular standard inkjet printer. You could also get um, just other brands of dark fabric transfers. Lots of companies make them. I can't say that I have like, oh, this one is my favorite because I like a lot of them. So hopefully that answers any questions you might have about what printer should I start with as a brand new crafter. If you're just getting started with Cricut, you're just getting started with using a cutting machine and you're ready to start working with images, I suggest getting a low cost inkjet printer. You're going to get great results. You do not have, you do not have to have a printer that costs more than $200 to get good results. Okay. So now let's move on to the second type of printer that crafters usually look for. And we're going to be looking at some sublimation printers. Let's talk about converted sublimation printers. And I'm going to remind you about what I said about the word best. It's a matter of personal preference. So while I cannot tell you what is best for you, I can only share what I have and what has worked for me. Okay. So let's look at those four categories again. Let's talk about converted sublimation printers. These two printers that you see right here are both considered as converted sublimation printers. When someone refers to a printer being converted, what that means is they're not using the ink that came with the printer. The price range for printers like, well, like this one right here, is right at about 200 to $400. I know that the Epson EcoTank 2800 probably runs in the high end of uh, between two, two and three hundred dollars. My printer was right at about three hundred fifty dollars when I purchased it, but I don't think they make this one anymore. It is the Epson EcoTank 2760. If I am able to find it on Amazon, I will link it below the video. I love this printer. It was the first sublimation printer purchase that I made. This printer right here is an Epson EcoTank 15,000. This one also does not have the ink in it that came with it. Now this one is outside of this price range because I paid $700 for this printer. This is considered as a wide format printer because it can print up to 13 by 19, okay? Now let's talk about it. The purpose of a converted sublimation printer will allow you to follow the sublimation process on a variety of substrates. We're going to look at some. The ink requirement for a sublimation, a converted sublimation printer is that you use sublimation ink. First, I'm going to show you the ink that came with these printers, and then I'm going to show you sublimation ink. All right, this box right here was purchased from, I think I purchased this from Hobby Lobby. On the inside of this box, I have all of the ink that came with these printers. So they both came with, you know, magenta and uh, cyan and black, and they all, they both came with yellow. And as you can see, this ink is still sealed up because I knew I was not going to be using the ink that came with the printer because my whole objective was to convert this printer to use with sublimation ink. So I still have all of the ink that came with the printer. I just keep it in this box because I just cannot bring myself to throw it in the trash. I just, I have it really basically for no reason because I don't plan to use it. Now, in order to have or use this printer for sublimation, I'm going to need to use sublimation ink. The ink that I have always used is this one right here. It is called Hippo. I have used to call it Hippo for the longest time. I refer to this ink as Hippo because those two O's at the end 
just gave me hippo. <laughs> and then once I started getting the new box, I realized that there was an actual hippo and that's when I started calling it hippo. So on the inside of these printers, inside both of them, I'm going to open it up so you can see the inside, but let me show you what the bottles look like if you are planning to purchase this exact same kind of ink. You definitely want to get the bottles that look like this that don't require a syringe because you just basically turn the cap over. See, it doesn't come out. It only comes out when it's attached to the actual tank okay so when you get ready to get your sublimation ink sublimation ink you want to make sure to get these kind of bottles and not the bottles that require the ink to be pulled out with a syringe now let's get closer to the printer and look at what those tanks look like you can see hopefully that mine let's get a little open bit it up just right here on the side and i'm going to open up the tank so you can see what that looks like there are actually four different color tanks so there's black yellow magenta and cyan and so you would just make sure that you are putting the right color in with the right ink slot and when it's time to refill it you just kind of open it up and if like let's just say i was ready to refill my yellow which i'm really not i would just place the bottle right here on top and i would push down i would not squeeze the bottle at all and i would just do just that and it will start to pour automatically okay i don't know if you can tell but my ink my yellow ink is filling up okay and so i just pull it off and then turn the cap back turn the bottle back over and i put that cap back on there okay so that is a sublimation a converted sublimation printer and i love this printer i love the fact that this ink does not run out i have had this printer for i've had it for a while i want to say i got this in 2021 and i have only refilled this ink one time okay let's look at the the other converted sublimation printer my epson eco tank 15,000. now you can see i have used that one a little bit more because my ink is you know almost you know it's not out but it's lower and so it's the same process really i have a you know the black ink the cyan so the colors are not in the same exact order as they were with the with the 2760 so if you look black is first up here and black is first here but over here is cyan then yellow then this is magenta this is magenta and then they put yellow last on this one so make sure if you are getting a printer like this that you pay attention to those um color tanks that you're going to be filling up all right let's look at some um, project ideas and examples for using a converted sublimation printer we're at this part right here now let's look at a few sublimation project ideas and examples now remember this is not limited to everything these are just a few examples that i could get my hands on really quickly so here's an example of a sublimated photo magnet now remember i've made all of these projects with my converted sublimation printers um, I, this is a sublimated keychain okay this is also an example of a sublimated keychain all right this is a sublimated shirt i typically use the cricket brand of t-shirts it's just my favorite. I think the quality of it is very nice. Um, when I'm going to do any kind of sublimated uh, shirt, I prefer the Cricut brand. Here's another sublimated shirt. So the difference between print then cut or photo transfers with sublimation, the ink is in the fabric. So if you look at this shirt, you can see that the ink is 
in it. It's not on top as it was with that other shirt. The ink is in there, okay? So you see how nice and vibrant that is. This is also an example of a sublimated project. So this is just one of those canvases that you can purchase. I got this from Walmart and it's just an eight by 10 canvas. And what I did was I sublimated my image on 100% polyester fabric and I wrapped the fabric around the canvas. Okay, so I kind of keep this up on the wall in my craft room. These are some um, sublimated tumblers that I've done. This is one. I actually did this in my Cricut mug press. Um, here's another one sublimated. I did this one in a tumbler press. This is just another, you know, photo sublimation mug. These are just Cricut mugs that I prefer. This is the first mug that I had ever done with my regular converted um, Epson Tank 2760. It's a Cricut mug that I did in my mug press. And here is another uh, sublimated tumbler. Okay, so those are examples of sublimation projects. Now, with sublimation, I always like to say, it's best if you have the Sublimation 7. And if you're wondering, what is she talking about? What is the Sublimation 7? Let me show you the list and I'll keep it up so you can take a picture of it. Okay, when I say the Sublimation 7, this is the list I'm talking about. So with the Sublimation 7, there are seven things that I say are pretty much required to get started with sublimation. Now, some people might say, oh, you need this and you need that. But in my opinion, if you have these seven things, you can get started with sublimation. So you're gonna need a sublimation printer. I showed you the two that I use. You're going to need sublimation ink. I showed you the ink that I use. I use the Hippo brand, remember Hippo. That's what I use. You're going to need sublimation paper. The sublimation paper that I prefer is A-Sub. This comes in a variety of sizes. So you can get an eight and a half by 14. You can get an 11 by 19. I mean, 11 by 17, 13 by 19. It comes in multiple sizes. I prefer this brand. There are other brands that you might like better. You will need a heat source that will reach 400 degrees. The Cricut 9x9 Easy Press will reach 400 degrees. You do not have to have a big uh, heat press like that. You will need butcher paper. I use butcher paper from Sam's Club. I am in the United States. It comes on a big, huge roll that looks like this and it's gonna last me a while. That is a, th a thousand feet of butcher paper. You're going to need heat resistant tape. I personally prefer the Cricut brand of heat resistant tape. I use it on this Scotch desk dispenser. I just like this. This is the kind I prefer. There are other brands. You don't have to use this kind. You will also need substrates. Substrates are things to put your sublimated image on. A tumbler is a substrate. A Cricut mug is a substrate. Um, polyester fabric is a substrate. Those keychain blanks are substrates, okay? So those are examples. So some people might say, well, you need heat resistant gloves and you need, you, you can get away with doing sublimation without having gloves, okay? You can, now it's not ideal, but in my opinion, these are basically the seven essentials, okay? So hopefully that, helps you with understanding the next level of printer if you're just getting started with crafting. So in my opinion, you start with your inkjet and when you're ready, when you've gotten some practice and you're ready to move to the next level to sublimation, you can start with a converted sublimation printer. You can, that's what I started with and that's what I'm going to continue to use. Or you can move to the next level, which I can only talk briefly briefly with you about because I don't have one, but those are actual sublimation printers. Okay. Let's talk about it briefly. Okay. So the next level of sublimation printer is to have an actual sublimation printer, printers that were made for sublimation that you don't have to convert them. The ink that comes with them is the actual ink that you'll need. They come with sublimation ink. 
Now, I do not personally have one of those. I've already shown you the two sublimation printers I have. I have an Epson EcoTank 2760 and I have an Epson EcoTank 15000, both of which did not come with sublimation ink. However, there are printers that do. One of them is called a Sawgrass and the other one is called an Epson Sure Color F170. I do not have either of those. In my opinion, they will probably work perfectly fine. They probably work fantastic because they were created to be used with sublimation ink. And I take a risk every time I purchase an eco tank and I put sublimation ink inside because. I am voiding my warranty when I do that. So that's a risk that I take that I gladly accept. Now, with the Epson um, Sure Color F170, I haven't heard anyone say anything negative about it. I do think that it is in a reasonable price range. I think they are right at about $400. That's actually cheaper than the Epson EcoTank 15,000 that I have, the wide format printer that I have, because I paid $700 for that one. But that one, the Epson Sure Color F170 came with comes with sublimation ink and you're not taking a risk, you're not voiding a warranty, you will get support from Epson. So that is, you know, those are things that to take into consideration. Also, Sawgrass makes um, sublimation printers and they, they use Sawgrass sublimation ink. I haven't ever used one, so I don't have an opinion about it. What I do know is that if you decide to go that route, you're pretty much going to have the same requirements as you would with the two Epsons that I have. So the purpose is to, you know, follow the sublimation process, the ink requirements, you're still going to need sublimation ink. And then the project ideas, you're gonna have the same project ideas as ones that I just demonstrated for you. You're not limited or you don't have more project ideas because you're using a truly, uh, you know, so a true sublimation printer is not going to increase the amount of projects you can do uh, for sublimation, okay? And once again, you will still need the sublimation seven in my opinion, okay? So hopefully that answers questions you have regarding sublimation printers, okay? Now let's move on to the last type of printer that I have. Now this doesn't mean that there are not other types of printers in the world. I can only talk about the printers that I have currently in my home. The last printer we're going to talk about is a direct to film or DTF printer. I did recently get this printer. I do not know a lot about it. I've only tried making shirts. It is my understanding that you can use direct to film on a variety of projects. And unlike sublimation, you're not limited to white or light fabric and you're not required to have a high polyester count. Okay, so let's look at that printer and I will go through the four four different um, categories that I've gone through with the inkjet printer and my converted Epson uh, EcoTank printers. The very last kind of printer we're gonna talk about today is a direct to film or DTF printer. Now, this printer is definitely considered an investment because the price range starts at right at about $2,500. Now this printer is, you know, new to me. I've only used it a few times. I've only used it on fabrics. Um, but the purpose of having a printer like this is to be able to print vivid, beautiful, bright images and not be limited to white or light colored fabrics. You can also, it's my understanding, use the, the film on various surfaces. So, so you can use it on wood, you can use it on acrylic. Now I haven't tried any of that but it's those, that's just my understanding. Um, the ink requirements, this printer requires um, the DTF ink and it goes in this little side compartment over here that I'm having a hard time showing you. And it does, you know, require, you know, 
uh, five different colors of ink. So this is different from sublimation because the DTF printer actually has white ink, whereas sublimation does not. Um, so that's one thing to note. And then, like I said, you could do various projects. Now I've only used mine, like I said, on fabrics. And this is one example of a shirt that I made using the fabric. So if you look at this shirt, you see how beautiful and vivid that eagle is. This shirt is, it's actually a polyester shirt. It's a Cricut brand shirt, but you can see that it has good stretchability. I can wash this and I'm not gonna lose any of the color from it. It looks nice and big and bold. And this is not a hack, so I wouldn't have to be, you know, using one kind of ink and a different kind, like all of this would be done from this printer right here. Now this printer does require the use of film. So that's why it's called direct to film because you actually print on film and not paper. It also requires the use of powder. So this is the Welliser brand powder. This is the kind that I prefer. Um, it also requires a dedicated computer and the use of the RIP software. So this one requires a little bit more technical skills than some of the, the other printers that I've just um, shown you. So hopefully you have found this tutorial helpful. I do want to share one other thing with you that, you know, will kind of give you some, I guess, kind of like a head start or a way to get started if you're just not ready to invest in a printer just yet, but you definitely want to have and use vibrant images. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's just say you already have an inkjet printer and you are good to go with print then cut. You've made stickers, you've made keychains, you've done photo transfers, and now you think you just might be ready to get started with sublimation, but you just can't afford that sublimation seven that I think, in my opinion, you need to get started. You can always get started with infusible ink. Infusible ink will give you beautiful, vibrant, bright, images that are going to not images but colors that will last for a long time because infusible ink works just like sublimation ink with the exception that you cannot use images so let me show you some examples of projects that i've done with infusible ink so this right here says mommy and it has my kids names on it and all of this is done with infusible ink and hopefully you can see the ink is in the fabric right so it's not on top of the fabric it's actually in there right it stretches with the fabric it is in it's a part of the fabric this is an infusible ink mug it just has my initial and i use the cricut uh, infusible ink markers to make this this is a cricut mug okay this is also done with infusible ink it just says coffee before talkie true statement um, this shirt right here was also made with infusible ink. This was made with a, the infusible ink markers. Okay, so I didn't need a sublimation printer to do this. I actually put this whole design together in Cricut Design Space and I colored it in with my markers. Okay, and I do have a tutorial for all of the things that I just talked about. And I hopefully you, you know, you found this helpful. If you did find this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks for watching. Bye.